Good afternoon. This is October the third, Tuesday, 2023, and we are at the Central Department of English at Trivandrum City, MA second semester, Creative Nonfiction class. Let me turn on this display first towards me to say it clearly. Okay. And uh, in the previous class, we were reading Anne Fadiman's essay, Night Owl. And I tried to read the essay almost line by line in class. That was not a good idea. And we could not finish more than 13 paragraphs. So what I did at home last night, I read the essay line by line on my laptop and commented on every single line and recorded the video and I have uploaded the video on my channel. So kindly if you, have, if you find time, watch that and then put me questions, I'll respond to you. Uh, what I would like to say that Fadiman's essay presents the voice of the margins in the sense that it talks about women and women which are regarded as the second sex. Simone de Boa, the French thinker, Simone de Boa wrote the book, The Second Sex in 1949, where she said, women are not born, they are culturally made. And how are they made? Women are made as submissive, uh, coquettish, unintelligent, having no wisdom, no strength, nothing good, just the body. This traditional thinking about women, that women are nothing but just a body to be consumed. In Sanskrit, the word for wife is bhogya. And the literal meaning of bhogya is something to be consumed. And even today, Katrina Kaif comes in that papaya advertisement about cosmetics oh, and we get the impression that women are to be consumed mm. so this idea that women are things to be consumed is bad mm. is dangerous it causes their exploitation and Fadiman breaks this concept by showing that look how intelligent a woman can be she can produce an essay like that where she brings 20 references. And she says that another sense in which the, that essay has the voice of the margin is that she says, we owls are one of the 10. There are the larks. Eight out of, out of 10 are normal people. Eight are normal people. One is lark, gets up early morning, goes to bed on time. One is owl, sleeps throughout the day, wakes up throughout the night. So this is the voice of the owls. Now, when Fadiman says, I'm an owl, do not take it literally. Take the word owl to understand how the society, how men view women. People look at women as different. People look at women as abnormal. People look at women as inferior. People look at women as unintelligent. And this essay breaks all those negative stereotypes about women. Right? Uh, the paragraphs which I didn't read from 13 to 21, there are other stories about how her father did a mathematical calculations to avoid sleeping, all that. They are humor. And uh, the, the point is that uh, women are intelligent, women are bright, women are studious. And women are not abnormal, they are normal people. With this, I close that essay. And to know line by line, watch the video and put questions in coming class, I'll respond to you. One more thing, uh, Fadiman's essay is quite different from Changreli's essay because Changreli primarily uh, depends on emotional appeal throughout the essay, whereas Fadiman uses logical and ethical appeal. Right? The similarity is that uh, in Changreli's essay, a female figure is at the center. 
in Padimans, it's also female figure is at the center. Now we come to Judith Oris Koffer's essay. Here, I want to make you understand one concept, the concept of exigence. In rhetorical analysis, the concept of exigence is very significant. Exigence is something that makes it necessary for someone to say something. I came to your class because I'm in the routine. Right? There is a, there is a reason. Now, in 1960s, what was going on in America? What was happening in America in 1960s? You studied this in BA third year measuring list theory book. What was going on in America in 1960s? The second wave of women's movement was going on. And women in America were getting united and fighting for the right. And one demand of these women in America in 1960s was that, women demanded that, women should have easy access to family planning. Women demanded that all women should be given the facility of family planning. Now, so in 60, women were fighting for the rights. And one of their demands was that women should get family planning facility. And this was a political demand. Because when women did not have access to family planning, many women had to be unwanted mothers. They had to bear unwanted pregnancy. So if women had access to family planning, their life will be safe. And as a result, women got access to family planning and it was a good thing. Now, women got family planning access 1960. Their situation was improving. In 1968, Pope Paul VI from Vatican City, Rome, issued an ordinance. He issued an ordinance. Pope, who is the religious power of Christianity, issues ordinances and all Christians follow. So Pope issued an ordinance known as, in Latin, Himen Vitae. And what did he do? In that ordinance, he was responding to a question. The question was, what is the purpose of sex? Intercourse. So the question in debate was, what is the purpose of sex? Physical sex. In orthodox Christianity, According to Bible, I haven't read the Bible, but I'm just saying without knowledge. Sorry for this. From religious viewpoint, the purpose of sex is procreation. The purpose of sex is to continue your bamsa. Purpose of sex is to continue your bamsa lineage. So, the purpose of sex from religious viewpoint is to beget children not pleasure not pleasure and we all know sex is the most pleasant activity that humans can do there is nothing more pleasant than sex we all agree but religion says no pleasure in sex is a secondary byproduct 
you should not have sex for pleasure no you should have sex to be good children and judith orid's coffer comes from puerto rico she is a puerto rican woman puerto rico is an island controlled by america by force by force from spain from i guess from spain i'm not sure i'm not sure or mexico i forgot america captured puerto rico using force and judith orid's coffer a puerto rican author belongs to catholic community she doesn't belong to protestants protestants who began with protest against catholics why protestant because they protested against the power of church catholics they respect church catholics they respect the father for catholics church is first representative of god so catholics honestly obey the decree of church they will follow what the church says that's why pope issues order do this and catholics will do so in 1968 pope six the supremo of catholic church issued an ordinance decree letter in which he argued that the purpose of sex is not only pleasure but also procreation to bring a balance previous popes there is a history previously popes always insisted that sex is only for baby having not pleasure pleasure was a kind of sin you had sex to give birth to baby now in this context coffer writes this beautiful essay responding this kairos this is the kairos this is the situation which gave birth to this essay so the question that coffer is answering in this essay is what is the purpose of sex do no where she says directly no in no paragraph coffer says she doesn't use the word sex no she is telling her grandmother's story but we clearly understand in one paragraph where she clearly mentions she says if my grandmother had got an access to birth pills she would not have to sacrifice sexual pleasure my grandmother wanted sex my grandmother wanted sexual pleasure but she sacrificed sexual pleasure by expelling grandpa from home because every time grandfather slept with my grandmother my grandmother became pregnant so her womb was never free not a single year year by year consecutively my grandma gave birth to 11 children in which two died and eight survived so my grandfather made my grandmother a child bearing machine my grandpa made my grandma a child bearing machine these girls reading this essay what do you learn you learn from this essay that you are not going to be a child bearing machine that's what you learn and you boys need to learn that your wives are not child bearing machines every time the grandmother said darling you can expect <laughs> grandpa danced because grandpa had to do nothing he enjoyed her body 
she had to bear the nine month pregnancy she had to deliver the child risking her life and when the baby was born grandpa cut pigs called the whole village musicians celebration i got a baby i got a son and all males will come they will drink dance play with their mustaches hmm surbir nine child 10 child 7 child and women will be crying in the house preparing for the bhoj because the man has to bear nothing the man has to bear no pain it is the woman that bears all pain imagine a woman delivering 11 babies right so the the issue was the issue was access of family planning to catholic women this was the issue and the church did not want access of family plan to catholic women because church the conservative church the orthodox church believed that using family planning to prevent conception is a sin is a sin for orthodox christians even masturbation is a sin because you destroy the sperm because they say sperm is for propagation in nepali dasai is coming and many people say santan le dana kaada dhakun dada richut and you know all those people who give this asirvad santan le dana kaada dhakun they are all males they are all males no female gives this asirvad to you if the males had to be here and conceive pregnancy no male will say santan le dana kaana dhakun they will say no no santan na paunu garu pa hundrai cha right so the question is so the question is the question is what can improve the situation of women so the question is what can improve the situation of catholic women and the answer is access of family planning contraceptives can improve the situation and the problem is the church does not want did not want women to have access to family planning as a result coffer's grandma gave birth to 11 children all these things are not in the story you have to find from outside reading now we will get into the story this is accidents what makes it necessary to write this essay accidents is always outside the text accidents always outside the text the circumstance the situation that encourages somebody to say something judith otis coffer was persuaded to write this essay because of this situation this is the kairos kairos is historical circumstances which bring a speech as a response okay as i erase you can put me questions now let's begin the essay more room let me open the essay if you had the project you could see the text you could easily follow me okay no problem i'll i'll begin so i'll read the first paragraph quickly and then comment look how it begins i'll read only one paragraph my grandmother's house is like a cham- chambered nautilus i'll read this my grand mother's house is my grandmother's house is like a chambered nautilus like a chambered 
Nautilus. This single opening sentence tells a lot about the whole essay. This essay, the writer of this essay is a granddaughter. The implied writer is granddaughter. The actual writer is Judith Otis Coffer. The actual writer, actual writer, actual speaker is Judith Otis Coffer. The textualized speaker, textualized writer, textualized narrator, writer is grandchild, granddaughter. And the message or the speech is about grandmother. The message is about grandmother. The message is also about grandfather. And this message is about the poor condition of her grandmother. The writer shows why her grandmother's life was like hell. Like hell. And she tells what we need to do to make women's life heaven. The last sentence of this essay is what the last sentence is? Check the last sentence. The last sentence of this essay is here is the sentence. Living according to the dictates of one's own heart. Let me write here. The last sentence. Living according to the dictates of one's own heart. This is what this writer is telling you people, particularly girls in this class. Live your life as per your heart says, not as per your husband says. See the line. Living according to the dictates of one's own heart. And every time grandma bore the baby, it was an unwanted baby. It was an... The problem was, grandma wanted sex. It's natural. We all want sex. Grandma wanted sex. So for the, for the body pleasure, she slept with grandpa. Now technically, biologically, when two young people have sex, one conceives. What was needed to avoid their conception? Family planning pills were needed. And these women were not given access to family planning pills due to religious reasons. So this letter shows how religion causes exploitation of women. How religion causes injustice to women. How religion causes injustice and exploitation of women. It was Christian orthodoxy, Catholic orthodoxy that prevented women from accessing family planning pills. As a result, they had to bear unwanted pregnancies. And their life became hell. And the grandmother unwillingly tells grandpa, I won't tell right now. Have you read the essay? Anybody? Pornun, yes to sanu, jamma eghara para baiko, yes to meet on the one in a pornun. Room is for you. That's for you. Ah, he knows. He knows. What's your name? Silas. Silas knows. The funny thing is, look here. My Nautilus. Now look. Nautilus is shaped like this.
So when the Nautilus is a sea creature, like Sankhya Kira, hmm? a Gongi, yes, in, in Tarai called Gongi. When the Nautilus is born, its body has chambers. Its, its body has chambers. So when the Nautilus is born, it has one chamber. And as the Nautilus develops, the chambers increase. As the body grows, more chambers develop in the body of Nautilus. And Koffer uses the metaphor of the Nautilus and compares her grandmother's house with the Nautilus. And she says, see the line first, first paragraph, it has many rooms, yet it is not a mansion. Its proportions are small and its design simple. It is a house that has grown organically. See the personification. She says, my grandmother's house has grown organically like Nautilus. And this single sentence has the whole essay meaning. What is the meaning? When she says, actually, when grandfather married grandmother, he made only one room in the house. When grandpa married grandma, there was only one room. And grandma became pregnant for the first time. And you know, in traditional societies, when a woman becomes pregnant, it's a good news for the whole family, right? It's a good news. Everybody's happy. So, women, when they become, when they conceive, then they start vomiting. You have seen? The, the raised belly is not seen first. It, is, it takes two, three months. So the mother, grandpa, told grand, gra grandma, told grandpa, that darling, you can expect now. Meaning, you are going to be father. And he danced with happiness. And then grandma said, darling, but we need room. We need room. We need room for the baby. So grandpa built an extended room. Let's draw here. One room. Now grandpa built another room. Now the problem was, grandma gave birth to the first baby. It was not even two months. And grandpa came and slept with her, made her pregnant again. So every year grandma will bear a child. And every year grandpa will add another room. More 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 room. God, he created a town. He created a town. If you get 11 children, you are creating a cricket team, football team. Not a family. Not a family. And the house grew organically in the sense that the rooms were aided only when a new baby was conceived. So every time a new baby came, a new room came. There was no Bhuitala in the beginning. The house had no Bhuitala. The ground floor was aided by putting stilts. Grandpa put stilts. Now I need projector to show you what is stilt. Have you seen Tharu houses in Tarai? Yes. Tharu houses have logs like this. And the house is here only, right? Stilts. Yeah. So, then she writes, it is a house that has grown organically according to the needs of its inhabitants. To all of us in the family, it is known as la casa de mama. I love this expression. I love Spanish. I don't know Spanish. I don't know Spanish. I wish I could speak Spanish. It's, sorry, it's very cozy language. When you pronounce Spanish fast, it's like poetry. It's like poetry. La casa de mama. Grandmother's castle. Grandmother's castle. And who lives in castle? 
king is living in castle. So grandma was queen. She says, my grandma was queen. She was empress. E M P R E S S. Empress. But the irony is that, the irony is that, if you are an empress, you are under an emperor. You are under an emperor. You are under an emperor. And who was emperor? Grandpa. Grandpa was a poet. Grandpa was a painter. Grandpa was a builder. Grandpa was a great patriarch who knew only one thing, conceiving babies. <laughs> conceiving babies. And every time he conceived, he was proud. He was proud. Like, he was like Nepali father. There is a saying in Nepali society, Bhaisi lai singh ko bari hundaina, marda lai bacha bachi ko bari hundaina. Who says? Men say. But if men have to conceive, they will understand bacha bachi kati bari huncha. Men say, bacha bachi bari hundaina, because they don't have to conceive. The grandpa enjoys each birth of the baby because he doesn't have to be here. Right? Now I'll move quite fast. Sir, where is the mention of castle though? Yeah. Oh, but, ah. <laughs> go through the paragraph, you'll find out. I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll show you. I will show you. I'll show you. Okay. Ah, this is the picture of the Nautilus, you can see. Yeah. Nautilus. That's why it is like a house. Chambers. Right? And then... This is Koffer's room. This is where she lived. It's a room, you can see. And then... This is the room where she lived. The house where Koffer lived. Uh, this is her Facebook page. She died in 16. And I brought some quotes from Facebook page. Because I see that Koffer had a special attachment to the houses. Koffer has a special longing for houses. House, family, roots. Okay. This is the house where she lived. Beautiful house. Koffer's house where she lived. Right? This is the house where she lived. Then... Uh, okay. Now I'll go, go to paragraph 2. In paragraph 2, Koffer uses beautiful images comparing the house. She compares her house with a bluebird. Like this. Look here. I'll show you pictures. She compares her, her house. This is a house with stilts. This is the house with the stills, you can see. Right? Stills. Then she says that my house was like this bird. Standing on a perch. She says that my house was like the hen sitting on the eggs. It is a meaning. Just as when the egg sits on uh, hen sits on the egg, children are born. The house gave birth to so many children. It's a beautiful description. Nothing can equal reading. No explanation will match reading. Okay, now we go to paragraph 3. Paragraph 3. Paragraph 3, okay. No, 2. So I said, in 2, she compares her house to a bird, to a hen, and... Uh, she says that my house developed like the ring of a tree. A tree has a ring like this. See, that's why I need pictures to show you pictures. What happens in tree, in nature, uh, each ring, each ring in the log represents one year. If a tree has 50 ring, it's 50 year old. So this is California tree. Any tree. Any tree has ring. Every tree has ring. One year, one ring. Two year, two ring. Hundred year, hundred ring. So, paragraph three now. We move to paragraph three. Okay. So, in paragraph three, one remarkable thing you will see that, let me tell you right here, I I'll may forget. I may forget. 
वॉट कोफर डज इज कोफर मूव फ्रॉम जनरल टू पर्टिकुलर फॉर एग्जाम्पल फर्स्ट शी टॉक्स अबाउट द हाउस देन शी टॉक्स अबाउट द रूम देन शी टॉक्स अबाउट द बेड देन शी टॉक्स अबाउट द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑन द बेड और अराउंड द बेड ऑब्जेक्ट इन द रूम एंड शी सेज दैट दिस हाउस वॉज हॉर कैसल एंड शी वॉज द क्वीन ऑफ दिस हाउस एंड द बेड वॉज हर थ्रोन इट वॉज हर थ्रोन नो वेयर नो वेयर कॉफर फोकसेज on physical beauty kofor always shows that her grandmother was an intellectual woman powerful woman it's important to understand because kofor is a feminist and in this in this essay which has a this essay has a feminist agenda this essay the writer has a feminist agenda what is the agenda give access to family planning contraceptives for women if you don't give every woman will have my grandma's pet similar to expel grandpa okay so she compares the she says her room is the heart of house see the metaphor see the analogy comparison room is compared to heart how heart has chamber room has rooms house has room heart has chamber heart controls rest of the body grandma controlled everything in the house from her room except grandpa only one thing she could not control the sexual desire of grandpa why she could not control because she also needed sexual desire otherwise everything she could control she is a ruler she is a ruler you will see now what she says okay she says that i had visited my grandma's room when i was a child and i was so small that when i stood at the counter tops i could not see above the counter tops now i am a grown up young woman and when i came to my grandma's house second time now i understand why my grandma's situation is like that now i have a feminist perspective now when i come to visit my grandma's room the second time i have a new perspective the perspective of modern woman perspective of progressive woman perspective of a woman with feminist ideology now i understand how my grandfather exploited my grandmother then i didn't know because i was a child now i understand why and how my grandpa destroyed my grandma and why my grandma had to expel my grandpa and sacrifice sexual pleasure to protect her body to protect her body the crucial question that is his answer says every woman should be able to enjoy sexual pleasure without risking pregnancy without risking pregnancy because the argument is because the argument is for us sexual pleasure is primary procreation is secondary for church procreation is primary pleasure is secondary for religion having a baby is primary bhagwan ko shishti should continue mahila ko sharir nash bhai hos bhagwan ko shishti should continue mahila ko sharir nash bhai hos 12 bachcha bhai hos traditional perspective feminist perspective sex is for pleasure not for begetting babies so let them have contraceptives 
Okay, now we move to paragraph. Uh, paragraph. Next one. I mean, I'm uh, moving to para. Um, three. No, four, four, four. In paragraph four, she describes various objects in grandma's room. Her grandmother did not have creams and all cosmetics. No. Her grandmother had herbal medicines in the room. Her grandmother had Bible. She was a religious woman. And Kofar shows how religion exploits women. Her grandmother bore all the children because she thought, God wants me to increase Shristi. She wrongly believed. Grandmother bore 11 children because so faithful to Bible. Yes. Let there be children and there were children. Like Bible says, let there be light, there is light. Let there be a baby, there are babies. Religion, the writer says, exploits women. I'll give you an example. Okay. So in para 4, she describes the things in the room. And she says, my grandma exercised power like a ruler. How did she exercise power? On the drawer, she kept a Bible. And above the Bible, she kept the key. Children wanted to come in, open the drawer, and look what is there. But when they saw the Bible, Bible says, don't do wrong thing, God will punish you. And nobody opened the key, nobody took the key. So grandma used Bible and God's cruise and the rosary, mala, as a weapon to control the family. When they saw the Bible, nobody did anything wrong. But ironically, ironically, she herself was destroyed because of religion. Para 5. In para 5, Koffer describes grandma's wardrobe, shufarob. In Nepali houses, you have mudus, you know mudus? Mudus, Nepali word mudus. It is a wooden box. Box made of wooden, kontur, kontur, you call kontur. What is kontur? Kontur is the, the vault, bank vault. Every valuable is in kontur. So here is shifarob, grandma's shifarob. And there is a key, but nobody opens the key. Because the key is kept on the Bible. And Bible has ten commandments. One commandment says, don't steal. Don't steal. Grandma wears satin slippers. Oh God, look. Look the dress she wears. Look. Now, she, is not, she does not have these dresses. But as a child, as a child, when it was locked, children imagined that grandma has these things in a room. Look here. Let me show you. This is the rosary, Bible and rosary with the cruise. Right? Let me show you. See the satin slippers. Her slippers. She did not have these things. Children imagined she has these things. Inside that? Uh, yeah. Box. Because it was locked. So they imagined. Look here. They imagined her dress like this. They imagined her gown like this. So this side also. Yes. They imagined. They imagined. She imagined as a baby. Now we move to the next paragraph. Paragraph 6. In paragraph 6, again she describes the things and she tells how she controlled everything in the house. Paragraph 7. Yes. Ah. Mama slept alone on her large bed. Oh, what an irony. Mama slept alone on her large bed. And we become thoughtful. Why, why would she sleep alone? And paragraph 7 says, Grandma slept alone. And we don't know why. Paragraph 8 tells the answer. 
when one of the daughters my mother or one of her sisters tells the cuento of how mama came to own a right finally mama took her right how how by the qualification that papa's exiled from his wife's room mama exiled papa mama exiled papa, papa. get out baitna paache ne bachcha banai dine get out Get out. Nonsense man से छोए के पचास साल माउने. Get out. What is the point here? Girls in this class, if you want to enjoy life, do not bear too many children. <laughs> bear children only when you need, not when the husband needs. Women are not a system to continue society. Women have not been created to continue shristi. Tapala shristi change bed me paunus. Kiri malal pay dene. Garo tapala kine parne. Ek sin bed bar niske hone, naasar ke hone, bazaar hone, an malal no mene bokre hine. Na lag pura karne. Ha? Tapay ko shristi chalan malal jan me ko. Malal ko jan ma tapay ko shristi chalan baar ko hoy na. That's the point. Right? Look, look your attitude. Pair of eight. So she tells, "Mama expelled Papa. How? One day, Mama said, 'Darling, yes, darling. Good news. Ah, yes, darling. Good news. Yeah, good news. Make another room.' Okay. Then she said, 'No, no. This time make separate house.' He thought Jumlia is coming. Oh. He thought maybe two two are coming. So he spent his special effort. He made best house. When house was finished, Mama said, 'Now get in.'" That's your house. <laughs> your house. That's your house. Right? Look what she writes. Mama's famous bloodless coup for the personal freedom. Papa was the benevolent dictator of our body. Papa was dictator of our body. See the language. Papa was Hitler. Benevolent kino. Sri Madhya Tanna khana dene, lau na dene, tar peet koyle khali lau na dene. Bo kaaku bo kai garne pachcha. बेनिबोलेंट बेनिबोलेंट के प्यारी खाओ मीठे मीठे प्यारी लाओ राम रो राम रो तर वर्ष पीछे मैं बच्चा पैदा कर आइरनी आइरनी बेनिबोलेंट बट डिक्टेटर दिस इज दिस इज से टायर दिस इज से टायर दिस इज से टायर सजना तु ही तो मेरा प्यार है तु ही तो मेरा संसार है तेरे बिना क्या है अभी अर्थ दिस सॉन्ग इन इन बॉलीवुड मूवीज This is a wrong song. This is a bad song. Sajana is not everything. Sajana is just a partner. Sajana is just a partner, right? Don't take your husband as everything. Look here. Question number nine, sir. Okay, then pair of nine. Pair of nine. In nine. He talks about her decent expel grandpa. Every time a child was due, she would demand more space, more space. Papa acceded and he made more room. This time, Papa made new house and he was expelled. Para ten. Para ten. In para ten. Ah, uh, okay. Wait. Para ten. Let me read what is para ten. Okay, nothing important. Para of ten. Para eleven. I go to para eleven now. Para eleven. Yes. Mama discovered that the only means of birth control available to a Catholic woman of her time sacrifice sex. This is the point where she makes the political agenda. Second line. Para of eleven. Mama discovered the only means of birth control available to a Catholic woman of her time. मैं जैसे पे घड़ी तब मैं के दिमाग का बसल दिन भाई तो सर ने बड़ी पढ़ा हुई दुई पर्स पढ़ा हुए हमी तो सर मरिहाल भसाल मैं तो डर लग कि घड़ी कता पे भर क्या तब तुम तानाशाही हो तब टीचर लाइम से पढ़ा दिन हूं है तब बानी के चाँडों छोड़ दे हम जान दे हम डिग्री खोजना आगे भाई बानी अभी के होता मैं डर लगी रख कि बड़ी भाई घड़ी हो तनाव भाई कि घड़ी फाल दिन न जिगर हटाई दिन न तब को क्लास कति बेला सकू पर्च इस सकिए 
एसे सकिए के को पंद्रह के को तीस के को पैंतालीस क्लास ते बेला सकि बेसे सकि तो तब तो घड़ी ने चल् एजुकेशन घड़ी चलते मामा डिस्कवर द ओन्ली मीन्स अफ बर्थ कंट्रोल अवेलेबल टू अ कैथोलिक वुमन अफ अ टाइम सैक्रिफाइस सी गेव अफ द कम्फर्ट अफ पापा सेक्सुअल लव फर समथिंग सी डीम्ड ग्रेटर द राइट टू ओन एंड कंट्रोल हर बॉडी दिस इज द आर्ग्युमेंट हे वुमेन यू हैव द राइट टू ओन एंड कंट्रोल हर बॉडी एंड वुमेन कैन ओन एंड कंट्रोल देयर बॉडी इफ दे हैव एक्सेस टू फैमिली प्लानिंग But Catholicism does not allow family planning. That's why women can't own an access to their body. The women can't control their body because of religion. If women had pills, they can have sex, avoid pregnancy, and control body, enjoy life. Catholicism doesn't allow them to have pills, so the problem is coming. Okay, paragraph eleven. Okay, so that. कोफर प्रेजेंट आर मेन आर्ग्युमेंट इन पैराफ इलेवन लास्ट पैराफ सो दैट शी माइट लिव टू मीट हर ग्रैंड चिल्ड्रेन मी अमंग देम सो दैट शी कुड गिव मोर ऑफ हर सेल्फ टू वंस ऑलरेडी देयर सो दैट शी कुड बी मोर देन अ चैनल फॉर अदर सी अ वुमन इज नॉट अ चैनल फॉर अदर लाइफ महिला अर्क जीवन पैदा करने मध्यम होने के लोग्ने को लगी पिंड खुआ पिंड खुआ मैं तार का तार एक दर्जन बच्चे क्या पैदा कर पड़े लोग्ने पिंड खान पे पिंड के खान पे पिंड मरे पुरुष ने मरे पी पिंड खान पाऊं भर मैं बच्चा पाने पर्ने सच सच एसेज आर पोलिटिकल भेरी प्रोवोकेटिव राइट एंड रीडिंग सच एसेज चेंजेज योर आउटलुक अफ लाइफ न आई नो दीज गर्ल्स विल नेवर गिव बट अबाउट बेबीज आफ्टर रीडिंग दिस एसे यू वुड थिंक टेन टाइम्स यू विल रिमेम्बर कोफर वेन यू आर मैरिड यू विल रिमेम्बर कोफर लाइक लुक यूर सी सेज She could be more than a channel for other lives, so that even now that time has robbed her of her elasticity of her body. Look, my mother does not have glamorous body because she bore twelve children. Message, kyo? Hello, women. Take care of the body, not the baby. Love your body, not the baby. Love your body, not the baby. and of her amazing reservoir of energy she still emanates the kind of joy that can only be achieved look see the last line she still emanates the kind of joy that can only be achieved by living according to the dictates of one's own heart so the argument is hello women you will enjoy your life only when you live your life according to the dictates of your heart not the dictates of your husband voices from the margin voices from the margin. margin a granddaughter speaks on speaks about her grandmother and while talking about her grandmother she speaks for all women around the world all women around the world Kofar is not only talking about her grandma; she is talking about all women. Yes. And I am sure these girls in my class, when they read Kofar, their life will change. <laughs> they won't be at twelve children, right? Because they know what Kofar says. So we stop here. Wait. Ask me a question on the essay. Sir, what's the meaning of this title? More room. More room. Yes. Ah, this is very metaphorical. Because the womb. is compared to room the womb is the room yes. womb is the room so more room the house had one room when he got married when grandma came with one room they are needed more rooms because more babies were born so if you if you add more rooms women's life will be ruined because More room means more babies. Point is, 
women don't have more room for men to impregnate them hello darling i have no room for you so you stay away women don't have more room for men to make them pregnant anymore women are not channel for another life women are not channel for another life don't treat women as a room to beget babies they are not poultry farm <laughs> women are not poultry farm yes questions Hmm? For, like rhetorical, rhetorical analysis sample papers. Oh, a rhetorical analysis sample papers. Okay, I will think of making one, but it's not a good idea that a teacher should give you samples. The better idea will be uh, you decide and one day have a workshop class here. Uh, the class should run three hours with a break, and in that three-hour class workshop, we will produce one paper in class together. And you will see the process. Maile tapai lai sample paper diya ra kape nu dena. Tapai le Google garnu ajaro paper pounsa. Internet ko paper powder lekhna hu dena. Tapai le mosonga bossera class ma lekhna wahan aunsa. Mosonga bossera class ma lekhna aunsa. Is aaj bhi mere ko dikra gare. Now let's talk. Changrili and Koffer are same, very close. Changrili uses emotional appeal. Koffer also uses emotional appeal. But Koffer does not use logical reasoning here. Koffer does not use ethical. Also, let's say she uses more logic, more emotional appeal. How does she use emotional appeal by by portraying her grandmother's situation through? She creates emotional appeal through the detailed description. and coffers essay coffers essay has more descriptive writing and also narrative writing coffer mixes description and narration changrili has more narration coffer has more description fadiman uses logical reasoning logical appeal and ethical appeal Changrili uses emotional appeal. Koffer uses emotional appeal. Changrili also talks about mother, a female figure. Koffer also talks about mother, a female figure. Changrili uses kitchen and food as a framing device. Koffer uses the house and grandma's picture, grandma's character, and the Nautilus as a framing device. But Fadiman, what framing device does Fadiman use? Fadiman uses, uh, uh, yes, the bed and owl and the owl and the lark, right? Then uh, Koffer has a clear exigence. I could not tell you the exigence in Fadiman's essay. I'm sorry for that because. i need more research i don't have information about why fadima wrote the essay but one thing i know fadiman's essay the night owl was published in a magazine which had the name the american scholar therefore her essay is full of scholarly ideas koffer's essay sorry koffer's story was not published in that kind of thing so where the essay is published determines the audience and the audience determines the appeal because changrili had average new york people reading the essay so he uses emotional appeal fadiman had maybe university professors and scholarly people reading her essay so she uses ethical and logical reasoning koffer although has maybe she has wider audience but one remarkable thing about koffer is that koffer is making argument but unlike fadiman koffer makes her argument through emotional appeal and this is a difficult thing in paragraph 11 and 10 i guess where she talks about catholicism toward the last two paragraphs in the last two paragraphs koffer clearly presents her argument 
but from para 1 through para 10 it's all description and there is more emotional appeal sorry, sorry. Hmm. in this essay what is the framing device what is framing device oh i i said the grandmother's figure is a framing device the house is a framing device the image of the nautilus is a framing device Any more questions? Any, any more questions? Can I stop here? So I'll upload the video by this evening. If needed, you can watch. I have another video I made this morning where I read this line by line. In that video, I have commented every line. If you want, watch, write. What do you video I have written my video. I have and watch the videos, write an analysis and mail me. Thank you. Thank you, sir.